So let's talk about Mid Journey. I believe it's the best generative AI to create artworks, images. And in this video, I'm going to exactly show you how you can use Mid Journey to create amazing graphics, amazing images that you can use it for different purposes like marketing, for your website, for your business, for any other project. So along the way, I'm going to show you how to use Mid Journey and also I'm going to teach you some advanced secret strategies about this amazing generative AI. So for this course, we have a private Discord channel that you can join and interact with other students. If you have any question, you can ask me there. I'm most of the time available and I will usually respond in minutes. So here is our Discord channel. The name of this channel is Coding Crew, as you can see at the top here, but I will also put the link to access this channel into the description of this video as well. So you can just click there and jump into this channel, uh, this group and join us. And here we have two channels specifically for Mid Journey under AI category. The first one is Mid Journey, where you can ask your questions, interact with other students, and I'll, I will also share some updates here as well. And also we have Mid Journey Practice, where you can come and uh, practice Mid Journey here. The Mid Journey bot is active in this channel, so you can write prompts here. For example, you can come here and write down Imagine and create your images and share your work with other students, right? So if you're ready, let's go for the next part. All right, so welcome to this lesson. In this part, we are going to learn how we can set up Mid Journey and begin using it. So here we are in the midjourney.com. You can click on the resources of this lesson or go on Google and just write down Mid Journey and come to this page. And here we are, there are a couple of buttons at the bottom of the page. If you pay attention here, we have get started, which later we will talk more about it here. There are the documentation of how we can use Mid Journey. But as I said later, we'll get to this part. We have showcases. I will talk more about it. You can see the work of other people what they have created and how did they create those images. It's very useful. And on the right side, we have join beta and sign in. Now, if you have a Discord account, you can click on sign in and write down the credentials of your Discord account. So if I click on sign in, as you can see, it will jump on Discord website, discord.com. At the beginning of this course, I invited you to join our discord group for this course and if you already did that and if you already have an account you can simply come here and write down your email or phone number and your password and click login okay so after you created your discord account you can come here and click on join the beta now one thing let me tell you you can have access to the discord platform through browser or through their desktop application. Right now I have their desktop application and I will show you in a second. So if you come here, click on join the beta, it will jump into Discord app, okay? And here we are, this is Mid Journey server, Mid Journey group, we can say. And right now we are here, okay? So in order to use Mid Journey, you can simply scroll down and come to one of these challenges, newbies, for example, you can come here, as you can see, these are the work of other people, okay? And we will get to that in a moment, but quickly, I just want to show you how you can use it. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page, and here, in the messages part, I'm gonna write down slash, okay? And then imagine, okay? So when I write this, when I select this uh, command, then it will open a prompt for me. And here I will be able to write what my image uh, should look like. So I can say, for example, an old man sitting on a 
chair in a cafe okay so nothing else just a slash imagine then press enter then write down your prompt i'm going to press enter it will take a couple of seconds or maximum minutes to uh, start loading what i asked it to so here it is it started i'm gonna fast forward the process all right so what we requested is ready as you can see an old man sitting on a chair in a cafe uh, and it was requested by me and if we open it it would look like this if you want to look at this picture in a bigger a larger size you can click on open in browser and it will open it in browser and now you can zoom in as you can see it's very detailed and there are really good images but uh, there are some settings that in the upcoming lectures i will tell you how um, to set these settings to receive uh, an image look like this like uh, photography right so one of the problems of using mid journey like this using newbies channels is that every second as you can see every couple of minutes there are tens of new images posted by other people right it's so crowded and if you want to find your own work it would be difficult now how we can do this more organized and more private so you can come here click on this plus sign add a server and then select create my own and then select for me and my friends here you can select a name for your server i'm going to select ai course you can select whatever you want and you can upload an image if you don't have it it's fine you can do it later click on create and then here as you can see at the top this server or this group was added right so one of the things that we have to do right now is to add mid journey bot to our server all you need to do for that is to come here at the top left side of the screen click on this arrow in this drop down menu select server settings here scroll down to app directory okay click on app directory here inside the search bar write down mid journey okay and then press enter and here it is mid journey bot just select it and then click on add to server okay let me make it bigger it's not getting bigger anyway click on add to server and then click on continue again authorized verify that you are human and that's all okay so close this and close the settings as well as you can see here it is written mid journey bot appeared so if i come here to the uh, command bar if i write down a slash imagine as you can see the prompt the command appeared the same way that it appeared inside the mid journey server if i select it now i can write a prompt and create an image here as well so I'm not going to do that right now because I want to make it more organized. So on the left side, you can create different categories and different channels. Now, I strongly suggest to organize your work. You can do it based on your projects or generally based on the way you want to use it. Here, I'm going to click on this create channel plus, And here I'm going to select a name practice. Okay. You can do the same then click on create channel now here as you can see before we were in general now we are in practice you can if you want to do practice you can come to this channel and practice you get different projects you can come here create a channel for each of them to keep your work much more organized so whenever you want to find something you can do it easier right there are other ways uh, for example some people suggest that you can come here to your direct messages select mid journey bot and write the imagine command here but 
this is not very organized because you have only one page here but here inside the server that we created you can have multiple channels multiple categories the way you want it and uh, this is much better if you ask me so that was all about this lesson and the next part we'll learn more about mid journey and how we can create cool images with it so see you on the next one welcome to the next lesson during this part we are going to talk about the subscriptions and how mid journey calculate how many photos you have created and how many more you can create based on your account type so the first thing that you need to do is to come to midjourney.com slash app okay or if you come to home page here it will uh, come to this address you can also click on the link in the resources to visit the same page but it will be with your own profile if you don't see this simply just click on sign in and then you will be able to see this page but for your account so the first thing that i want you to do is to come to manage subs okay so sometimes it um, check the connection and um, let me make it a little bit smaller all right so as you can see this is my plan i'm on basic plan it is a paid one so if we come down you will see something like this this is basic plan standard plan and pro plan now if you look at um, the information under it on the basic plan you can create about 200 uh, minutes so mid journey calculate the time it is spent to create images for you and based on that they will charge you right for example for a standard plan they're giving us 15 hours of fast generations and uh, for pro plan 30 hours okay so um, when you create your account for the first time you're on free version and you can uh, I think as far as I remember you can create something around 15 to 20 images and then uh, it will stop you and it will ask you to go on a paid plan okay so if you are on a free plan you should know that after generating um, around 15 to 20 images mid journey will stop uh, the bot for you and uh, then you have to change your plan in order to keep using it so let's jump on our uh, server in discord okay and here let me make it bigger and let me remove the right column so one of the things that you can do to understand how many more minutes or how many more images you can create you can come here to the server that you created which has access to the mid journey bot and write down a slash info okay it provides info about your profile so if i press enter it will tell me that uh, my subscription plan is on basic uh, i have fast mood images uh, i will tell more about the fast mode later as we get to the setting part and then uh, the visibility mode is on public again i will explain this in the setting part after that fast time remaining it's about 160 minutes remaining from the 200 minutes they gave me so almost 80 percent of my account left and i can use it and at the end of the month they will reset it and i can start using it again so the lifetime usage is about 186 images about two hours okay i have used it i have used zero relaxed images about relaxed images again i will explain in the setting part okay so here when you write down a slash info it will give you some information about your account you can go ahead and try this on your on your own account in your discord um, group and see how many more minutes you have left from your uh, if you are using a free plan how many more minutes you have to to generate images okay so that was all about the information you may need regarding your subscription and how many more images you can create and on the next lesson we'll start generating our first image and learn how we can do that how we can upscale it and so on so let's go for the next lesson all right so let's create our first image the way to create an image or generate an image we have to use the command imagine so i'm going to write down a slash imagine okay and then we have to write a prompt for it 
And the way that Midjourney create an image is that based on the keywords or the words that we write inside the prompt, it will generate an image. So whatever I write here, based on those words, an image will be generated. So if I write down, for example, flowers beside a river, okay, it will generate an image based on each of these words okay it will go through all of these words and then it will generate four images so if i press enter usually it will take a couple of um, seconds or maximum one minute or two to generate the image okay right now it is waiting to start and after for example a couple of seconds you see it went on fast so as you can see here it's written on fast and how much it generated you see it is generating the images 46 percent and uh, when it is on fast mode it tries to generate the images as fast as possible okay but if you upgrade your account to um, other plans like a standard plan and pro plan um, it has another option which is called relax i think here yeah here it is unlimited relaxed generations okay so it has 15 hours of fast generations, meaning when uh, you send a request to generate an image, it will start in a couple of seconds, okay? But if you finished that 15 hours, you have relaxed generations. It means um, you can generate as many images as you want, but it will not have the priority. It means it may take longer to create them. So, uh, that was all about the fast that I mentioned in the previous lesson that I will explain later. And as you can see, this is the image that it was generated by Midjourney. So if I click on it, you can see there are four versions here and under it, it's written open in browser. If I click on open in browser, it will open it in my browser and then you can zoom in and see the images with more details, okay? As you can see, it's like um, like painting, right? It's like art. So I'm gonna close it and let's go back to Mid Journey. And under the image, as you can see, there are several buttons. U1, U2, U3, U4, and V1, V2, up to V4, okay? So the way it works is that each of these images has a number. This one on top left is number one. This one is number two. This one is number three, and this one is number four, okay? So it just starts from top left side, go to right, then the second row, again, go to right. So if I want to up a scale image one, I have to click on this button. If I want to up a scale this image, I have to select U2. If I want to up a scale this one, I have to select U3 and U4 for this one. Now, what does V1 to V4 mean? So let's say I like this image, okay? The first one, which is number one. But I want other variants of it. I will click on V1. Let me show you. If I click on V1, again, it will take a couple of seconds to start. And then it will create similar images to the first one, but uh, with small changes, right? You see, it is generating it but as you can see there are small differences i will fast forward till the image is ready all right the image is ready and if i open it let's open it in browser so as you can see uh, they're very similar right but for example here we have on the second image we have more flowers the trees are a little bit different but the main concept is very similar okay we have pink flowers in front and then we have the river almost the same way right so if you like an image but you want to make some changes you have to do it like this now let's upscale one image for example let's upscale this one the second image if i click on u2 it will upscale this one so let me show you one thing until yeah, it's ready and if i click on it it made this image in the bigger size okay it's ready and I can use it. But let me show you one thing. When you upscale an image, if you go to your home, 
when you upscale an image after some time the image will appear here so other people who come to your page they can visit the images that you upscaled right so i wanted you to just know about that and there is there was another button here and it's this one okay so when you write a prompt but you don't like the result at all okay you can click on this one and it will regenerate everything from a scratch okay let me show you if I click on this it's like that I wrote I write this prompt all over from the beginning again so you see it will now regenerate four other images beside um, this one that it, re it generated at the beginning okay so let's go down I will fast forward till the image is ready all right the image is ready and if you look at it it's completely different the whole idea is different from the other version if I open for example this one in the browser and let's open the other one the first one yeah it was this one in the browser as well and compare them together this was the first image that it created the first four variants and these are the second four variants that it created you see it's completely different in different area in different environment okay so anytime that you want to have more than the four variants that you received in other concepts you can click on regenerate again right this button so that was all about generating an image and upscale it and the next lesson uh, we have a practice that i'm sure you're gonna like it so see you on the next lesson if you're enjoying this video i would really appreciate if you like the video and if yet you're not subscribed to our channel please subscribe because i don't want you to miss our new updates and new tutorials about ai about programming about marketing business and other self-development videos that i share on this channel daily right so like subscribe and then let's jump into the next part welcome to the first practice in this chapter so in this practice i want you to generate an image for your private mid-journey discord server okay so earlier we created a private discord server for uh, generating images and i want you to create an image for the for this server okay so we can use it for our server and you should create this image based on the name of your server whatever it is or whatever it does okay but here we will have an example example name server will be for example ai image generator or artificial intelligence image generator and here are the steps so use the related keyboard okay to generate your image then save the image okay on your computer and after that upload it on your discord server okay it's very simple but i want you to practice to get better at the process so if you're ready pause the video and begin the challenge all right so how was it did you manage to complete the challenge so let's do it together first of all here we are in our server and i'm gonna go to the server settings right my server name is ai course but i'm gonna rename it to for example let's say let's write ai image generator okay i'm gonna save changes and i'm gonna close it now it is ai image generator now let's create an image as an icon or as a thumbnail for this server so i'm going to come here and write down slash imagine okay and then i'm going to write down artificial intelligence image generator as my um as my prompt okay so uh, i'm going to press enter and i will fast forward to the image is ready all right so the image is ready but if you pay attention these images are not very good for a thumbnail of a server right they are so complex so many details and it is hard to understand if you look at for example the servers that i uh, i join right now you see all of the icons are very simple and uh, very clear so uh, probably the result that you received would be different with uh, the result that i got but I want you to practice 
using the right keywords to get the result that you want in this lesson. So let's try again. So we want something that shows it's about a machine that is generating or making an image or images, right? So we want an icon or thumbnail like that. And, it, and we want it to be uh, minimal, right? It, we want less details, not so many details like what we have here. So I'm going to try again, write down slash imagine. Okay. But this time I'm going to write down, for example, machine printing image. Okay. But I'm also going to add another keyword, which is minimal. Okay. When you add minimal, it will decrease the amount of details and it will generate several images with less details. Okay. And with empty spaces. So let's press enter. I'm going to fast forward till this image is ready. All right. The image is ready. And as you can see, the word minimal made a lot of changes, right? We have a lot of empty space around our objects and it's much better to use these images for a thumbnail comparing to these images, right? And uh, as you can see, for example, this one is not so bad. It's a printer. We are going to use it for now. But as we go forward during the course, when we learn new things, we will be able to create better images for our private server. Okay. So I'll, I want to upscale this one, which is number three. I'm going to click on U3. And again, it will take a couple of seconds to prepare it. Now it's ready. There are two ways to save it. Either I come here and right click and right uh, select save image, or you can go to the browser, okay, and then save the image, okay. Both ways work. So I'm gonna save it, and then let's go to my server here. Go to the go to the settings, and here click on this icon, change icon, and select the image. Okay, save changes. And as you can see, the icon for our private server has changed. Okay, so that was all about this practice. And the next lesson, we will talk more about the other options to generate better images. Welcome to the next lesson. During this part, we are going to talk about the settings we select for our mid journey bot. So Let's come here to the uh, to the message bar in Discord and write down a slash settings, okay? And press enter. So when you select the settings, it will bring some options for you. Right now that I'm recording this lesson, what we have here is, for example, mid journey version one, two, three, up to five point one, okay? Then we have raw mode, NG four, NG five and some other options that I will explain as we go forward. In this lesson, I want to focus on the first two row, the mid journey version, the raw mode, and what is Niji. So let's focus on mid journey version first. So the lower versions, it will be a little bit faster, but the image that it will generate will be in less quality, less detail. If you want realistic images, it will be less realistic you understand, you get the point, right? So by default, it will be on the final version that you are using, or you can select it. And at the end, you see here, it is written, adjust your setting here, current suffixes, dash dash V 5.1, okay? You can write this at the end of your prompt, but right now that I have selected, clicked one time on mid journey 5.1, it created this suffix at the end of my prompt, okay? If I click on reset, okay, it will remove the suffix. But if I select, for example, mid-journey 5.1, it will add this suffix. So let's create generate an image with this setting and then change the settings and see how the images will be changed as well. So I'm going to write down slash imagine. And for the prompt, I'm going to write down flower, on a table, okay? So I'm gonna press enter. And if you pay attention at the end of my prompt, this suffix added, dash dash V a space 5.1. This is telling our bot that we, which version of mid journey we are using right now, okay? So I'm gonna fast forward till the image is ready. 
All right, the image is ready. And if I open it in browser, you can see all of these images are more or less like an artwork, right? It's like a painting. It's not realistic. So how we can do that? Let's come here to the settings again. You can write down settings again inside the message bar, or you can use the settings that you entered previously. So here we have an option which is called raw mode. If I activate this, at the end of my prompt, it add another suffix which is called dash dash style space raw. Okay. So what it does is that it will remove any effect that it may have on these on images that it will generate. Okay. So let's uh, use the same prompt that we did earlier. So I'm going to write down imagine and inside the prompt, I'm going to write down flower on a table and press enter. Now, if we look at the prompt, now we have a style raw at the end of the prompt as well, in addition to what we had before. So I'm going to fast forward till the image is ready and then we will compare it together. All right, the image is ready. So if I open it in browser so we can compare it, as you can see, it looks more realistic, right? For example, look at this one. It's more realistic. If we come down, this one is just on the table. This one is in a glass of water. You see, it's not like painting or art. So it will remove any um, effect or any filter on the image. If we compare these two, for example, let's compare this one. Okay, on the right side with this one. Okay, so as you can see, it's very realistic here, but here it's completely like painting. Okay, so if you want to get more realistic images, you should always use uh, the raw mode. Okay, so let's try Niji uh, so you can understand how the images would look like on Niji 5. Okay, so let's write the same prompt again, imagine flower on the table. And now uh, we, here as a suffix, we have Niji 5. And the thing is that when you select Niji, it doesn't have any raw mode, right? Okay, that raw style is only for mid journey versions. Okay, for Niji, it doesn't have that. So I will fast forward till this image is ready. So the images are ready. Let's open it in the browser. And as you can see, now it's like a cartoon, right? Okay. You see, it's this one with raw style is realistic. This one was like artwork, like painting, but this one, it's like cartoon. Okay. So uh, if you want to create images like this, put it on Niji. If you want realistic, put it on raw mode. If you want like painting, just turn off the raw mode, but select the mid-journey version that comes last, okay? For example, in my case, it is mid-journey 5.1, okay? And I usually, because I like realistic, and mostly I use realistic images, I turn on raw mode, okay? So that was all about the first row in the settings. And if you have any question, write it down for me. If not, I strongly suggest you to practice a little and uh, with practicing, you get better at what we have learned till now. So if you're ready, let's go for the next lesson. All right, so in this lesson, we are going to talk about the blend command. So let's come here and write down slash blend. Now what blend does is that it will mix two images or more together. So here I have two images. I'm gonna click on image one, which is this cupcake and then image two, which is this cute monster. Okay. And if you look at here at the bottom of the prompt, it's written plus four more. If you click on it, an option will appear. The first one is dimensions. You can specify the dimension of the image that you want to generate, which later in the next chapter, I will provide more information. Then there are image three, four, and five. So in general, you have the ability to combine five images together. But right now, I'm going to just let it be as it is, just combining mi or mixing these two images and press enter. So let's wait till the image is ready. 
the mixture of these two and uh, I will fast forward till the process is done. All right, so the images are ready and as you can see, they look very cute. So the blend command will mix two or up to five images together, right? So you can try it yourself, upload different images, two or more images uh, using the blend command and see the result for yourself. So that was all about the blend option. And uh, on the next lesson, we'll talk more about the explore page. So see you on the next lesson. All right, so till now we have learned the basics of Midjourney. And here there is a page called Explore. I want you to uh, visit this page because you can learn a lot of things from here. On this page, you can see all the images, the hot images or rising or top images from other people generated and what the prompt, what was the prompt they used to generate these images. For example, if you come here, if I click on this image, if I scroll down, this is the prompt that this person used to generate this image. And if you look here, these are the four first images that from that one of them was selected, which is this one. So if I click on it, we can see all the four images. And here is the prompt they used. So if I select this myself, okay, just copy it, okay. And let's go to Mid Journey and write down Imagine, okay. So if I use the same prompt that this person used, more or less I have to receive the same result, more or less close to this, okay? The only thing which will be different will be the size, the aspect ratio of the images, which on the next chapter I will talk about it, it's here in the settings, but I didn't uh, want to mention it here. Later in the next chapter, we will talk more about it, okay? So as you can see, I'm getting more or less the same result as he got here, but uh, only the only difference is the aspect ratio of my images. Mine are uh, square size, but here it's different. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward till the image is ready. All right, so the images are ready, and let's open it in the browser. And if you pay attention, the style, the character, they're very similar to what this person had here, right? So. If you want uh, to create the same thing, or if you see something here which is interesting, you can look at the prompt and learn from this prompt, okay? If you, for example, like this image, or if you want to use this image for your business for some specific project, but you want it a little bit different, you can use the same prompt, but make some changes to receive the different result that you require, okay? So you can come to the Explore page, and go through the images and learn more uh, from the prompts that they wrote, okay? So that was all about the Explore page I wanted you to learn. And on the next chapter, we will talk more about uh, the different commands and uh, properties that you can use to make changes on your images. So that was all about this lesson. If you have any question, write it down for me. If not, I will see you on the next part. Welcome to the next lesson. In this part, we are going to talk about the describe command. So let's say you have an image and you want to create an image similar to that one. How we can do that? It's very simple. We can come here to the mid journey channel that you have in the uh, messaging bar, write down a slash describe, okay? Then you will be able to add an image. Click on, um, this icon here or drag and drop it. And here, for example, I'm gonna just select this image uh, and come here in the messaging bar and press enter. What will happen is that Mid Journey bot will look at the image and analyze it. Then it will, it will write four different description for it, okay? So this way, if you want to create a similar image using Mid Journey, you can try the uh, descriptions that Midjourney bot itself created, itself wrote for this image, 
or if you think it's not very related or true you can uh, click on the refresh icon and midjourney bot will do it again so i can come here for example select number four and come to the messaging bar and write down imagine slash imagine and then paste the description that midjourney itself wrote for me press enter and let's see what image it comes up with so i'm gonna fast forward the process all right the images are ready we can open it in the browser so we can look closely it's not exactly or 100 percent the same image that we uh, just uploaded on midjourney but it's very similar especially this one i think it's very similar to the image that we uploaded here right so in general if you have an image and you want to build similar images like that one you can use the describe option so midjourney itself describe the image and write a prompt for you and later as we go forward in this chapter we will learn more settings about midjourney that will give you the ability to create more similar images to the image that you upload for example for this part i used midjourney version 5.1 with raw style okay but as we go forward especially in this chapter there are other options that i will teach you that will help you to create similar images to the style that we have in this part so that was all about the describe method on the next lesson we are going to learn more about the aspect ratio see you on the next part in this lesson we are going to learn more about changing the aspect ratio of the images that we want mid journey to create for us now if you pay attention till now all the images that we have created were in a square size as you can see these previous examples but especially about the example that we had in the previous lecture the result wasn't a square as you can see here right each of them has the same aspect ratio but it's not a square okay how we can change that there's a simple setting that we can write at the end of our prompt which as you can see it's written here actually when we use the describe method on this image midjourney itself created that setting for us as you can see it's written here dash dash ar space then the aspect ratio that we want for example let's come here and write down imagine and let's say i want uh, to create images with full hd aspect ratio which is 16 to 9 so i'm gonna write for example blue cute monster okay then if i want to change the aspect ratio i have to write down dash dash ar standing for aspect ratio then space then the aspect ratio that i want in this case 16 colon 9 okay press enter and then it will create uh in four images with this specific aspect ratio let's try again with another aspect ratio let's say i want an image for instagram stories so i'm going to come here and write down imagine the same prompt let's say blue cute monster but this time i'm gonna use the aspect ratio for um let's say it's vertical for instagram which is vice versa of what we had earlier so it will be 9 colon 16. if i press enter the images that midjourney will create will be vertical so i'm gonna fast forward till both of these images are ready all right both of these examples are ready now the first uh, variant as you can see it is on full hd 16 column 9 and as you can see the aspect ratio is horizontal right but if we come here this is the example that i mentioned it can be used for example for instagram stories and if i open it in the browser you can see it's all where each of them are vertical and we can for example upper scale one of them let's try that for example let's upper scale number let's say three and open it in the browser again to see this individual image separately right so let me open it in the browser 
and here it is you can see it is all vertical okay so this is how you can change the aspect ratio of an image and if you have questions about the specific aspect ratio you can search on google to find the correct number based on your needs all right so that was all for this lesson and the next part we are going to learn about another parameter in mid journey which is called stylize in this lesson we are going to learn more about another parameter which is called stylize the mid journey bot has been trained to produce images that favor the artistic color composition and forms to control that how strongly you want this training to be applied on your images or not you can use this parameter to change it and we write that by 2-s or stylize okay and the number for mid journey 5 starts from 0 to 1000 okay so let's try it on the blue monster example so i'm going to write down a slash imagine okay and i'm going to write down cute blue monster in jungle okay and then i'm going to write down as dash dash s and then put it on zero okay press enter and then again i'm gonna change this write another prompt and the same prompt and change this to 1000 okay from minimum to maximum so you can see the difference okay when it is on maximum on this one which is 1000 um it the mid journey bot will use its training to create more artistic composition forms and colors okay so i'm gonna fast forward the process so you can see the result all right the images are ready and this is on a stylized zero and as you can see it's more or less very basic and it designed the images very close to the prompt that we wrote but here it tries to be innovative and favor that artistic training that uh, they created for mid journey bot and as you can see it is more detailed and uh, more artistic compositions right so you can either change this number by writing this parameter or you can go to a slash settings and here in the third row we have a style low style mid high and very high and if you pay attention to the suffixes here uh, on default it is on a style mid okay if i click on it you will see dash dash s100 will be added if i go on low it will be 50 high will be 250 and very high will be 750 but manually you can change this up to 1000 the 1000 for mid journey 5.1 is the maximum okay so this is how you can change the stylus level but let me tell you one thing if you change it here and also you want to add it yourself at the end it will take only one of them okay so if you don't want to have it here you can go back on what it was okay on medium or if it is visible here you can just click again on med on the style med and it will go away okay so pay attention not to uh, set in a specific uh, style or setting two times one time uh, from the suffixes here or and one time manually in your prompt okay so that was all about stylize. On the next lesson, we are going to talk about the chaos parameter. So in this lesson, we are going to learn more about another parameter, which is called chaos. So if we come up here, for example, in the blue monster example, as you can see, these four images are very different from each other. But if I select one of them, for example, number three, and I say create four other variants from number three, if we look at the result, it will be very close. Each of these four images grid will be very similar to each other. I'm going to fast forward the process so you can see the final image. All right, the final image is ready, but as you can pay attention, these four images are different, but very close to each other comparing to the 
first image that we had, you see the monsters itself are very different from each other. Now, the chaos parameter is controlling the differences between each four images. So uh, here, as you can see, because the chaos parameter is low, the images are very similar to each other. So if I get the same prompt, okay, and let's write down imagine and paste the same prompt, blue cute monster with the aspect ratio of full HD. And then if I write down dash dash C or chaos, okay, I can control the difference between four images. So uh, the number starts from zero up to 100. Okay, so 100, if I set it on 100, it will be very different. If I set it on zero, they will be very close to each other. So I'm gonna start with zero and write another prompt and write 100 for chaos. So I'm gonna fast forward the uh, processing of these images and then we will compare both images together. All right, so the final images are ready. And if you pay attention to the result, this is on chaos zero. Still, there are differences. It's not like what we had here, but you see the more or less the style of these four monsters are very similar to each other, right? The style of the image is very similar to each other, okay? But here, you can see this one is completely another style. This one, another style. This is like, 3d with other kind of material and this is like 3d but fluffy right so you can see how different they are and you can just control that by writing down dash dash c a space then a number from 0 to 100 okay so this was the chaos parameter you can control that based on your needs so that was all about this lesson on the next part we will learn how we can add image inside our prompt in this lesson i will teach you how you can import an image inside your prompt so mid journey can use that image in the images that it will create for example i have this image here and i want to import this image inside my prompt okay i have it on my computer and what i'm going to do on the same channel that I am, I'm going to come and click on this plus sign beside the messaging bar, okay? And then select upload a file, okay? Then I will select it from my computer, okay? And then press enter. It will upload this on Discord server, okay? Now this image has a URL for itself, okay? This one also had because it was on Midjourney, right? But let's say uh, we don't have a URL for our image and it is only on our hard drive. This is the way you have to do it. You have to upload it on your channel. Okay. You have to come here, use this plus sign and upload it on your channel. Then if you click on it and click on open browser. Now, as you can see, it is on Discord server and it has a specific URL. Okay. Now I can copy this URL. Okay. Or I can come here and write down imagine, okay? I can paste the URL or I can just select this image, hold my mouse point, drag and drop it inside the prompt, okay? It will paste the URL of this image here. After that, I'm gonna add a space. Then I can write my prompt that what I want mid journey to do with this image okay so i'm gonna write down full face portrait okay i'm gonna press enter and let's let's fast forward the process and see the final image together all right finally the image is ready sometimes it takes a couple of minutes for it to get ready but uh, i just fast forward it so you didn't notice but it takes i think about four or five minutes to pr uh, to process this image sometimes when you upload an image it will take a little bit longer to create the image because it needs it needs to analyze it first 
and then use uh, the prompt that you wrote. So if you pay attention, I didn't write what type of face or what type of person or let's say female or male person. I didn't mention any of it or I only wrote full face portrait, but it combined it with the image that I uploaded earlier. And as you can see, here is the result. Okay. So itself, it, has, it, it understood that I want a woman with more or less similar because uh, similar mouth uh, close up, right? In the example, in the image that I sent, it's just uh, the close up of the mouth and teeth, okay? A smiley face itself, it understood and created the rest of the image, right? So this way you can upload any kind of images that you want. But as I mentioned, it may take a little bit longer than usual to process the image. So you have to be a little bit more patient until the image is ready. Okay, so that was all about this lesson. If you have any question, write it down for me. If not, let's go for the next one. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the quality. Now, when I say quality, I don't mean the resolution or the size of the image. We are talking about the details inside the image and the time that Midjourney requires to produce those images. Okay. Let's go back to the examples that we had. For example, this blue cute monster okay, with this aspect ratio. And we can come here inside our prompt. Let me write down a slash imagine first and paste this prompt. Blue cute monster with the aspect ratio of 16 colon nine. And then to change the quality, I have to write down dash dash Q. And there are only three numbers for this uh, to control the quality. The first one is 0.25, okay? Then we have 0.5, which is half, or one. The maximum number is one. And by default, it is on one, okay? So I'm going to uh, do this with the quality of one. And then let's write another prompt with the lowest number possible, which is 0.25. Okay, I'm going to fast forward it until the images are ready. And then together we'll compare the quality differences between two prompts. All right, it's not uh, finished yet. As you can see, the one on quality one, which is highest, still it is processing it. But this one that I did it later, a couple of seconds later, it's already done, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. When you decrease the final quality, okay? So this is with max quality, this is with lowest quality, okay? When you decrease the quality, it, the images will be processed much faster. And of course, this way you spend less time from your mid-journey account so you can create more images. So um, the good thing about this quality when you decrease it is that uh, you can try different prompt practice and find the right uh, type of prompt that you want, then generate the highest quality version, okay? So if I open this inside the browser and let's go to the other image with maximum quality. So this one with, is with low quality. You can see how it is, right? It has less details. Um, uh, as you can see, it is a little bit um, simpler comparing to this one. You can see here, there are a lot of details, okay? Right? So when you decrease the quality, the image will be ready much faster and there will be less detail. As I said, it mostly is good to practice, okay, because it will be ready faster and you spend less time from your mid journey account. So that was all about this part. Let's go for the next one. All right, in this lesson, we are going to talk about different styles for Niji model. So let's come here and write down slash settings. And if we come to the settings, if you pay attention here, we had um, the mid journey version, which for this version, we have raw mode, right? And we also have Niji 4 and Niji 5. But when I select Niji, okay, the raw mode will be gone, okay? And there is no other style here. But in fact, there are other styles, but uh, it doesn't just show you inside the settings, okay? 
This is one of the things that you have to find it if you read the documentation and look for it. Anyway, I'm going to teach you three different styles that works for Niji, right? So let's come here inside the prompt. We have selected the Niji version 5, okay? And I'm going to write down imagine and use the same prompt that we used earlier, this cute blue monster, okay? And now I'm going to change the style by writing down stash dash style space. The first one, the first type is cute, okay? So I'm going to copy it, press enter, okay? And there is another type. Let's paste the same prompt. And the name is called expressive, okay? Let's paste this one. Let's press enter and there is another Niji style type and that is called scenic. Okay, let's press enter and let's wait until all of them are ready. Then I will show you the difference between each style. It's very useful, especially if you want to create cute stuff or uh, more like cartoon stuff because if you remember Niji specifically focuses on uh, something like animation or ca cartoon stuff right and these are three types in that area which will help you a lot okay so I'm gonna fast forward until all the images are ready all right so all the three styles already and if you pay attention this was the first type style cute and if you look at the result as you can see all the results are very cute like um, Asian or Korean cartoons right all of them look like that but if we go to expressive okay it focuses more on the expressions and showing the expressions okay let's open it inside the browser look at for example the first one the second one you see we can understand and feel the expressions inside each of them right it's more clear and finally the last one which is called scenic which is try to create a scene okay to show and express a scene so let me open it inside the browser as well you can see we have the environment we have some for example action something happening right it's more about a scene creating a scene inside each of the images okay so uh, you can use each of these styles based on your needs i just wanted you to know that these three styles exist right now okay so that was all about the three styles for niji let's go back to the settings that was before let's come here go to mid journey 5.1 and the raw mode okay always when you use settings pay attention to the suffix that what you have and if you don't want to have for example a specific setting inside your suffix you can simply click again on that option to remove it okay so if i just click again on mid journey version it will remove it so that was all about this ascent if you're ready, let's jump into the next one. All right, so here we are at the final lecture of the Mid-Journey Intermediate chapter. And in this lesson, we are going to learn about another parameter which will help you to create images for textures or patterns, okay? And that parameter is called tile. So let's come here and use the example that we had earlier cute blue monster okay and as i mentioned in the previous lesson right now our settings is on mid journey version 5.1 in raw mode okay and if i press space here and write down dash dash tile okay and press enter it will create four images that it is possible to uh, use it as a pattern or use it as textures okay we can uh, put uh, those images side by side each other and we can just uh, 
uh, paste it over and over from each side and it will work very well it will fit uh, to the design that it has so i'm gonna fast forward till the image is ready all right the image is ready let's open it inside the browser and look at it so here we are this is the first image and if you look at the top left corner and bottom you see the rest of the head of this monster is here at the bottom okay and for example here the other hand of this monster we can see it on the other side and it goes the same for the other ones let's look at the image on the right okay this one okay you see half of this monster is here the other half is here so if we take this image and put it side by side each other we can just use it as a tile and just produce uh, bigger images that works very well let me show you let me open photoshop here and let's just um, use for example the second image let's upscale it and download it on our hard drive and then use it as a tile so let's come here let's click on save image all right so the photoshop is ready let's just bring the image here let me go to the downloads and right, drag and drop it here so this is the image that we just created i'm gonna bring it here inside this larger image okay let me zoom in and if i just duplicate this image and put it side by side you see um these monsters are complete now if i get both of them and just duplicate them from the bottom side okay you see these monsters are were ready and uh they look awesome right we don't even see the lines okay if i for example select this one okay the lines are here but we don't see them because it is working as a tile okay like a wallpaper or something so this is how we can create images like this it's very simple all you need to do is to write uh, a slash uh, is to write dash dash tile inside your prompt okay so that was all about this lesson if you're ready let's go for the next part if you're enjoying this video i would really appreciate if you like the video and if yet you are not subscribed to our channel please subscribe because i don't want you to miss our new updates and new tutorials about ai about programming about marketing business and other self-development videos that i share on this channel daily right so like subscribe and then let's jump into the next part welcome to the next lesson during this part we are going to talk about multi prompts it is possible to have the mid journey bot consider two or more prompts separated from each other and the way we separate each prompt is using two columns so here's the example i can come here and write down imagine and let's say my prompt is hot dog okay now this is one prompt right so i'm gonna press enter so we can see the result and i'm gonna fast forward till the image is ready all right so the image is ready and as you can see we have a hot dog now what if you do it this way what if you write down imagine and write down hot and after right after hot we add two column then a space then write dog okay now with writing two columns we are separating these two words from each other okay now this is one prompt and this is another prompt if i press enter we will not get the same result okay because earlier in this example the mid journey bot was looking at this prompt as one okay so it was one prompt here and it was combining the meaning so it is a hot dog right but here as you can see we don't have any more hot dog sandwiches okay it's all either dog or it is showing some uh, warm uh, feeling inside the image so this way using two columns you can separate uh, different prompts inside one try okay 
So in this example that we have hot separated from dog, in the images we see um, dogs that somehow it is trying to show us the feeling of hot as well or warmness as well. Okay. For example, here there is a dog wearing something to become a little warmer, right? Or here, for example, we have a fluffy dog with sunshine from behind. Okay. So it tries to mix the meaning of different prompts that you have used. Okay. Let's have another example. Let's write down imagine. And here, let's have cupcake. Okay. And let's run another example. Imagine let's separate cup from cake. Right. And let's wait for these images to be ready. Then I will explain uh, the next concept. All right, so the image is already. This is the first try, the first example, which we had cupcake as one prompt. And you can see we have cupcakes here, right? Normal. But here we have separated cup from cake. And if you pay attention, we have a cup here, we have a cup here. Here we have a mixture of a cup and a cake, somehow strange. Again, here we have a cup. So the way it works, let's say we want to have more cake inside these images comparing to cup, right? How we can do that? We can come here and write down imagine and write down cup, add the two column after that, then the next word or the next prompt, which is cake. And here again, we add the two columns. But if you want to increase the importance, the level of importance of that prompt, right after the columns, you can add a number. For example, here, if I write down two, it means that the cake is two times more important than the cup. So focus on the cake twice more as you're focusing on the cup. So if I press enter, we should see more cake inside our images than we see uh, in the previous example. Until this image is getting ready, I will make another example. Instead of increasing the importance level of cake, we can decrease the importance of cup as well. We can come here and write down imagine, cup to colon, and here we can write down 0.5, okay? We are decreasing the uh, importance uh, level of cup by half, right? So space and write down cake. Now, this should also give us something similar to this previous example. All right, the first example is ready. And if you pay attention, here we have more cake than we had before. We have the cup somehow here. We have the cake. We have cake here. Okay, it's mostly focused on the cake. We have the cake here. We have the cake here. Okay, but as you can see, in two of the images, we don't have the cup anymore. Okay, so this is why the numbers are also very important if you want Mid Journey to focus more on that specific prompt. So the other one is also ready. In this example, we decrease the importance level of cup. As you can see, we have more cake inside these images as well, comparing to what we had before, which was this one. Okay. Now, this technique can be very helpful in some cases that we don't want to have something in the image. For example, let me write down, imagine colorful flowers. Okay. So here, Midjourney bot is trying to generate images for uh, colorful flowers. And uh, after it's ready, I will try to remove one or two of the colors that exist in this example and try again. The image is already, and as you can see, in almost all of them, we have flowers with blue color. Let's say we want to remove flowers with blue color, okay? Let's say we don't want any flower in our image to be blue. So how we can do that? You can come here and write down the same prompt. Imagine colorful flowers, okay? 
we can separate it with two columns and then write down blue, okay, colon, colon, then write down zero, okay. This way we are telling um, the mid-journey bot that we don't want to have any blue color in the image. But there is another way which is more easy, which is much easier, and that is instead of separating uh, prompts, we can come here and use a parameter. And that is to write dash dash no blue. Okay. With this way, we are telling the mid journey bot that we don't want to have any blue color inside our colorful flowers image. Right. So let's press enter and see the result. All right. The result is ready. And if you pay attention, we have way less blue color. You see, it? we have only one blue color here in this example and one here but inside the rest of them we almost don't have the blue color but if you compare it to the previous example we had a lot of flowers with blue color right so this way we almost we removed the blue color from the uh, images that we generated now you can do this also with objects for example you create an image you don't want a specific object inside the image. Like, for example, you don't want a book or you don't want the table or the door or a person inside the image. You can write down dash dash no, then the object that you don't want to have inside the image. Okay. So, uh, one other thing if you just use negative numbers, also it means you don't want to have that specific object. For example, if I come here and write down imagine colorful flowers okay we had this example before that i mentioned you can separate it with two columns and then write down for example blue two columns zero okay if you write down negative numbers for example minus one it will have the same meaning it means that you don't want to have blue color inside your image all right so that was all about the multi prompts in mid journey and on the next lesson, we are going to learn more about permutation prompts together. See you on the next part. In this lesson, we are going to learn more about permutation prompts. Permutation prompts allow you to quickly generate variations of a prompt with a single imagine command. So here is how it works. We can come here and write down imagine. And let's say you want to generate an image about cute, for example, blue monsters, which are fighting. Okay, so cute blue monsters fighting. Now, let's say I want to have different colors of monsters. Okay, let's say blue is one of the examples. So the, if I want to have different colors, okay. I'm going to come here and write down curly brackets, opening and closing curly brackets. And inside it, I'm going to write down blue. Let's say I want uh, monsters with, for example, red color and also purple. Now, what is happening is that right now, this way I'm running uh, the imagine command three times. The first time it will run it this way, cute blue monsters fighting. The second time it will run it this way, cute red monsters fighting. And the third time it will be cute purple monsters fighting. This way you can uh, generate different uh, variations of a prompt with the small changes at once. Okay, so if I press enter, it will ask me that, are you sure you want to imagine three prompts from this template? And I say yes then it will create the three prompts that I asked it to. So we have cute blue monsters fighting, we have cute red monsters fighting, and cute purple monsters fighting, okay? So it's, it is trying to generate the images. I will fast forward the process until the images are ready. All right, the images are ready. This is the first version, the blue monsters. Okay, you can see we have it here. Then we had red monsters and then we have purple monsters, right? So this is how you can 
make a small change inside your prompt and, diff and run different variations of it. For example, you can change the environments, you can change the colors, okay, or um, the lightings, for example, one can be uh, with cinematic lightings. In the upcoming lectures, we will talk more about a different type or variations of lighting or environments, okay? So in general, you can use this technique to run multiple prompts at once, okay? So that was all about this lesson. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask me and I will be waiting for you on the next part. Welcome to the next lesson. In this part, we are going to learn more about Remix. So let's come to the settings and at the bottom line, we have several options. Let me quickly explain the first two. The first one, which is public mode, if you have free um, account or uh, the first type of uh, paid account that I have, the only way that you can use this is on public mode, okay? But if you have a more expensive type of accounts, you, you will be able to have another option, which is on a stealth mode, which the content that you create will be hidden from public view, okay? But all the contents that you create like this will be available for public, okay? And we have fast mode, which I explained uh, before. And here we have another option, which is called remix. Right now it is on for me. You can click on it to turn it off. But in this lesson, we are going to talk about this one, okay? So come here inside the settings and turn remix mode on. Now, let's generate an image. Let's write, for example, green watch. Let's wait for this image to be ready. All right, the image is ready. Let's open it in the browser. And these are the four examples that we have. For example, the right one is very good. We have another option here and here. Okay, so let's select this one. Let's upscale it. It's number two. And when this image is ready, let's say we want this type, but we don't want the material of the band, right? We can come here and click on make variations then the remix prompt will appear and we will be able to make changes in the original prompt that we made. Okay, we can come here and write down metal band and let's say we don't want to have any leather material inside our image. So I'm going to write down dash dash no leather. Okay, and let's um, increase the value of a stylized to 1000 okay and let's submit it now it will take the changes that we made here okay but it will apply it only on this image okay it will not generate new images okay as you can see we have the same image but with the changes that we asked for now i will fast forward the process till the images are ready all right, so the images are ready and let's open it in the browser. And if you pay attention, the band is changed now, okay? We don't have the leather band that we had earlier, okay? It's all metal, right? Uh, using uh, Remix, you can make changes in the images that you like, but there are some small problems or small issues that you don't want uh, and you want to change them. With Remix, you can simply make those changes happen. All right, so that was how to use the Remix option. If you are ready, let's go for the next part. Welcome to this lesson. During this and the next couple of lectures, I'm going to teach you a couple of keywords that will help you to generate good and better quality images specifically for your needs, okay? so. In this lesson, we will focus on keywords connected to camera, okay? So the first keyword that I want you to learn is close-up. So if you want to generate an image of something specifically, you can use the keyword close-up. For example, let's say, let's write down imagine, close-up, 
of a cat's face. Okay. Let's try a couple of prompts. Let's say imagine close up. Okay. And we can use curly brackets to generate several prompts at the same time. So close up of an old man's face. Okay. We can say a green apple. Okay. And anything that you can imagine. Uh, if you just want to focus on a specific part of something, you can use close up. Let's say of a wallet with cash. Okay. And so on. Let's press enter and yes. So it will generate all three prompts at the same time. All right, the image of the cat is ready. And as you can see, it's only the face, right? Even we don't see the ears, okay? So if you just want to focus on some specific part of a body of something or specific part of, for example, we can talk about car, okay? Close up image of, uh, for example, car's windshield, right? Car's door. Here, we suggested an old man's face. You see, it's just the face. Okay. So you can use the word close up. Here we have green apple and you see it's just the apple. Okay. Even not the whole apple is up here in all four images, right? And three of them is just part of the apple. So great image, right? So you can use the word close up to just focus on a specific object, okay? This is a, the best definition. Focus on the specific part of the object. The next keyword that I want you to learn is macro, okay? So let me show you the effect. Let's write down imagine. Let's try with the similar examples that you had here. So I'm gonna come here and write down macro photo of, okay? And let's open curly brackets and write down wallet with cash. Okay. Let's say green apple. An old man's face. Right. And macro images, usually it's good to demonstrate a product. Okay. So here I'm going to use, for example, a gold watch as well. Okay. So let's press enter. Yes. Okay. Let's wait for all the images to get ready. All right. Three of the images are ready. The gold watch is under process right now. But let's look at the images that we have and compare them with the previous examples. So if you pay attention here, let me open both of them in the browser. Okay. This is the macro example. And this is the close up example. So let's focus on the image that we have here. Okay. If you pay attention on the example that had macro inside the keywords, it usually tries to show some specific small details, but also we will have a uh, focus and blurry part inside the image. Okay. So the focus of the camera is here and we see some blurry part of the face, right? It, it's the same way here. Okay. Only a small part of the object is focused. Okay. The rest of it will be blurry when we use the keyword macro. Okay. That's why I mentioned it is good for showing products. Okay. You can see here, right? It's focused. Here it's blurry. Here it's focused. Okay. Let me go to the left side or the mouth. It's blurry. Now let's compare it to the other example that we had. You see here, we don't have, we have blurry areas, but it's not that much comparing to the previous example. For example, here you see 
more or less the eyebrows are clear, the eyes are clear, the nose is more or less clear, okay? Here is the same, okay? Um, the blurry part in macro, it's more. Let's compare two other examples, okay? Let's compare, for example, Apple of the macro version. No, this is the close-up, okay? And let's go back. Scroll down to the Apple for macro version. So if you look at here, let's zoom in. Can you see here it's focused? Here is blurry, right? Here is focused, here is blurry. But if we look at the version here, you see most part of it is focused, right? Here is mostly blurry. But in general, when we are talking about macro, usually tries to focus on very small details on that object, okay? Let's look at the gold watch example. Right, you see here, it's focused very on a very little part showing details, right? You can see here, you can see even the jewelry worked on some specific part of the watch. So, for these examples, we can use macro. Even if you pay attention here, we can see small details on the material used to create this watch. You can see like something like dust or scratches on the body, right? So for these things, you can use the keyword macro. The next keyword that I want to tell you about is wide angle. Okay, and it is better to use it for environment, okay? So if I come here and write down imagine, let's describe an environment, for example, a beautiful garden in spring, okay? Then let's add wide angle shot, okay? I'm gonna copy the same prompt and try it again, but this time even I can add another keyword to increase the wide angle. I can write down super wide angle, okay? Let's wait for these images to get ready. All right, the first one is ready, the wide angle shot. And if we look at it, let's open it inside the browser so we can see all the details. If I zoom in, if you pay attention, it's like a little bit curvy, right? It's like that we are seeing a lot of the items in our area. Okay, it's like a fisheye lens. For the environment, it's, an, it's a good idea to use this keyword, the wide angle. And let's see if the super wide angle is ready. Yeah, this is the super wide angle. And if we compare it with the previous example, you see it's much wider, right? It's much circular. Let's look at each of them individually. You see, if you want to generate images for environment, it's usually a good idea to use wide angle shot, but if you want to increase that, you can use super wide angle keyword, okay? So that was all the keywords that I wanted to share with you about camera, okay? About the way that we look at the objects. And the next lesson, we are going to talk about keywords related to a style okay so that was all about this lesson i will see you on the next part welcome to the next lesson in this part we are going to talk about keywords connected to a style okay so let's come here and the first keyword that i want to point out is something that i talked about it earlier and that is called minimal let's say for example a dog playing in a garden okay Let's copy the prompt and do it with the keyword minimal as well. Minimal, okay. So we can see the difference. Let's wait for both images to be ready so we can compare them together. All right, the images are ready. This is the first one without the keyword minimal. And as you can see, it's complete image of a dog playing in a garden with tons of details. And if we scroll down, you see, let's open it inside the browser. For example, in this one, which it looks like an image, we have 
we don't have much details right it's a wall it's there are two small trees here with a dog okay here we have something like an icon or a logo we can say with just a small number of details a small number of items so the keyword minimal is really good if you want to create thumbnails if you want to create icons or logos you can use the this keyword right let's go for the next style which is uh, zbrush or blender okay so if you want to create a 3d object okay and we we want it to look 3d okay we can use this keyword let's use the same prompt but this time let's add zbrush okay or you can add blender as well both of them will create the same effect and uh, if you are not familiar blender or zbrush both of them are softwares to create 3d objects and if you use their name as a keyword inside your prompt it create the same effect inside our image all right so let's look at the images so if you pay attention it's obvious that it looks three-dimensional right it's like that they build it for an animation movie right so you can use these keywords for this specific purpose the next keyword that i want you to learn is minecraft it may sound funny but it creates cool images so let's use the same prompt but this time i'm gonna add minecraft to it okay now minecraft is a game if you are not familiar it's a game but the look and the design of it it's like 3d pixels okay and when the image is ready you will see what do i mean by that and we can combine this these keywords that i'm telling you together for example we can say a dog playing in garden minecraft and also zbrush okay so let's create that as well and see what it's going to create for us all right the image is already and if we look at for example this one is only with the keyword minecraft okay and if you open it inside browser you see it's very similar to the game minecraft okay it's using the same style okay 3d pixels and if we look at the other one it's very similar but um we just pointed out that it should be more three-dimensional so we can see the trees like this right so anyway you can combine these keywords together as well now the next and the last keyword for this lesson is isometric so isometric is really good when you want to focus on a specific object or environment for example we can come and say imagine let's say garden in fall okay and then let's add isometric okay and i'm going to copy this prompt and write it again but this time i'm going to add minecraft to it as well so let's wait for these two images to get ready All right, the isometric Minecraft is ready, but the other one, the isometric it alone is still under process. Sometimes, as I said, uh, it takes longer to just create a specific image. But anyway, let's look at isometric Minecraft type. So let's open it in browser. And as you can see, it's just showing the garden like three dimensional isometric images, but like minecraft with pixels okay sometimes it's really good idea to show something especially some specific object or product or environment like this okay so this is the way to show it let's see if the other image it's not ready let's try to generate it again all right the image with the keyword isometric is ready as well let's look at it in the browser so if we look at it we see the garden in fall but it's not like pixel boxes right it's not like that but it is isometric okay so you get the idea of 
what do we mean when we say isometric, right? So that was all about this lesson, keywords related to the style of the image. And the next lesson, we will talk more about some related keywords to lighting. Welcome to the next lesson. And in this part, we are going to learn more keywords about lighting. So the first type of lighting that I want to introduce to you is volumetric lighting. So let's write a prompt. Imagine a young girl studying in a dark library. Okay, now I'm going to add the keyword about lighting, the type of lighting that I want, and that will be volumetric lighting. Okay, so I'm going to copy this prompt and let's wait for this image to get ready. All right, the image is ready. Let's open it in the browser. And when you look at volumetric lighting, usually we have lights that in general shows the volume of the environment that we are in, okay? Usually we don't have sharp, for example, lights or shadows on face, okay? You see, it's very soft lights on the face, but again, we can see the volume of the environment, okay? It's a little bit dark because I added the word, the keyword dark in my prompt. But anyway, when you use volumetric lighting, it will um, show the environment much better, okay? The next keyword that we are going to talk about will be sharp and strong. So let's write down strong, sharp lighting, okay? Let's wait for this image to get generated. All right, so let's open it in the browser and analyze it together. So if you pay attention, we see less of the environment, okay? And we have strong lights and sharp shadows, okay? Same here. You see, we have a strong light in the girl's face. We have a strong light on uh, the objects here. We see less of the environment, okay? Here is the same. We have a strong light here, and it's only this light, you see? We don't have any other lights in our environment. It's only this light that it's just showing us the rest of the room, okay? So if you want to create images that uh, has the feeling of sharp shadows, uh, you can use this kind of lighting as well. Let's go for the next keyword and the last keyword here, which is cinematic, okay? So let's remove this part and write down cinematic lighting and let's fast forward all right let's open this image in the browser as well and compare it with the previous examples so as you can see we have other lights inside our environment and the image looks like a movie right it's like very cinematic it's the same way in this example same way here, we have soft lights and soft shadows on the face, right? We, they are not very strong or sharp lights, okay? And if we compare it with previous example, you see the difference, right? The feeling of the image is completely different. This is volumetric lighting, okay? You see it's very different. This one was sharp and strong lighting, okay? And this one is cinematic. And when we say cinematic, even the color of the lights are different, okay? And it is like movies. In movies, if you pay attention in good movies, the lightings, usually they try to use color, different colors of lightings um, to create different kind of feelings. For example, here in the background, we have blue soft color, but in the face, we have yellow warm color, right? It's more or less the same way in these images as well. So that was all about the keywords that I wanted you to learn about lighting. In the next lesson, I will teach you how to use ChatGPT to write advanced prompts for mid-journey. So see you on the next part. Welcome to the next lesson. And in this part, we are going to learn something very advanced. And that is 
using ChatGPT to generate advanced and complicated prompts for us to use in mid-journey. So this is my ChatGPT. And the first thing that you should know at this version of ChatGPT that I'm using right now, the knowledge of ChatGPT stopped at September of 2021, okay? So back then at that time, there was no mid journey. So ChatGPT is not aware of this AI tool. So the first thing that we have to do in the prompt that we want to write for ChatGPT, we have to inform ChatGPT of this AI tool. Now, don't worry about this prompt. On the next lesson, there is an article that I put this prompt exactly and you can copy and paste it for your own ChatGPT. So in this prompt, I explained that there is an AI image generator called Midjourney and the way it works is to write a prompt and describe the image we want. I want your help to, with writing the prompt all the details like camera shots, lightings, surrounding objects, feeling, characters, and so on, okay? So every topic that I provide, I want you to write a super complete prompt describing everything in the scene, okay? So you can just copy and paste this from the next article inside your ChatGPT. Then ChatGPT will be waiting for you to write the topics. So here, uh, I tried different topics and let's go for the first one. One of my friends is a photographer for dentists and he shoots images of the patient's teeth. Okay. And he told me to ask Midjourney if Midjourney can create images, close up of teeth, for example, of different people. So I came here inside ChatGPT and I wrote down, I want this AI tool, meaning Midjourney to generate images for teeth advertisement, okay? It should be a, it should be close up of female mouth showing all the teeth clean and straight, okay? With white background and soft lights, okay? So when I wrote this, ChatGPT provided this prompt, okay? This long and detailed prompt, and I'm gonna copy this prompt inside our uh, mid journey and write down imagine, and then paste this super long prompt, okay? Press enter and let's wait for it to get ready. Until Midjourney is generating this image, let's go back to um, ChatGPT and we can uh, write down other prompts here and uh, describing other topics and, Mid and uh, ChatGPT will create prompts for that. Let's say we got an offer from a restaurant Okay, from fast food and they for example cook uh, burgers and they asked us if we can provide some images of burgers for their menu right so let's say i want this ai tool to generate images of burger for a fast food restaurant i want you to write a complete and detailed prompt of tasty and eye-catching burger with details like cheese and etc. Okay, so until ChatGPT is writing this prompt. Let's go back and let's look at the images that Midjourney generated for us. So these are the images that Midjourney generated for us. And as you can see, it's very clear. It's focused on the teeth, on the smile. It, there are a lot of details. We can see even uh, small details on the face, on the skin, right? Here is the same. And it's really good if you want to use this, these images for advertisement. Sometimes, as you can see, for example, the teeth here, it's not looking correct, okay? The size of this teeth, it's longer than the other one, but that's okay. It happens sometimes, but as you can see, the um, almost, I can say, the anatomy of teeth here in these three images are more or less correct, okay? 
So if it's not okay, if you feel it's not correct, you can come here and regenerate the image. So let's come into ChatGPT. And here is the prompt that ChatGPT provided. Let's copy this, okay? And let's come here and write down imagine and paste it. And let's fast forward the process. Right, I don't know about you, but I'm getting super hungry here. So let's open it inside the browser. And as you can see, it's an amazing image, right? We can see a small details, the cheese melted, okay? We have everything that we must have inside the burger, even uh, the ground, it's really perfect, right? Same way here. Let's scroll to the right. Okay. Right, it's really, it's really looking tasty. You can see the cheese melted here and came on the floor. And uh, even the bread is toasted on the sides, right? So uh, it's really good. And uh, we can use macro uh, keyword here as well. But anyway, if you are not uh, satisfied with the result, you can simply go back to um, ChatGPT and edit your prompt the way you want the changes to happen, then save and submit it again, copy the prompt ChatGPT provides, and come here and paste it inside MidJourney to generate images for you, okay? So that was all about using ChatGPT to generate images in MidJourney. If you have any question, write it down for me. If not, I will see you in the next part. Welcome to the next lesson. In this part, we are going to talk about the new features of Midjourney 5.2. Okay, it's really great, and the quality of the designs that it can do, it's impressive. So uh, they also added some features for it that right now I'm going to show you. Now, earlier today, I was working on the cover image of this course. Okay, here are some of the samples, as you can see. And I'm going to show you how you build these images using Midjourney 5.2. So let's come back to our AI generator channel. And here, let's write down imagine. And here is the prompt that I used for this uh, specific image. A powerful, modern, futuristic, uh, armored suit, superhero, orange, black, light, etc. Okay. 3D render, realistic, black hole, and the ratio of it is 16.9, okay? So I'm gonna run this, and uh, the new features that right now I'm going to show you are really helpful, especially when you find, uh, when you create an image that you really like, but you want to make some changes on it, okay? It's really helpful, and in a moment I'm going to show you how it works. But remember, before you come here and use it, go back to your settings, okay? And inside the setting, make sure that you select Midjourney 5.2. And also it has raw mode as well, okay? So you can turn it on. Right now that I submitted this image, it wasn't on raw mode, okay? But I can try it again with the raw mode as well so you can see the difference, okay? So let's run it. So it is version 5.2 with raw style, okay? All right, the first image is ready. As you can see, it looks impressive, okay? And let's say, for example, I like, let's say, number three, okay? So I upscale it. And when it is upscaled, we have some additional features here. The first two options is uh, it will make some other variations. The first one uh, will create some variations, but uh, the result will be very different, okay? And the second one will also create variations, but the different wouldn't be much. So let's try the version with low difference first, okay? And when it is ready, I will run the other one, which will create a lot of differences. So here is the one with raw style okay so on as i said on raw style 
we have less uh, we have less effects on our images. So let me open, let's say open this one on the browser, okay. And let's open the other one on the browser as well. So this is on raw mode, if I zoom in, okay. We see more details and it is a little bit more realistic, okay. And it really looks amazing, okay. I'm fascinated by what they have done on Midjourney 5.2, okay? But here, you see it's more um, like 3D, okay? Here it's a little bit more realistic, okay? We can see small details, scratches, noises on the suit, right? And it looks great. I really like this one. Anyway, let's go back to Midjourney. And all right, so this is the one with little difference, okay? So here is the image that we upscaled, and then we submitted a request for Midjourney to create other variants of this image, but with little differences. And, and as you can see, they are very close to each other. For example, the eyes are a little bit different, okay? For example, here on the head, we see some small differences in the detail like look at the chest okay it's very similar to each other but there are small differences okay let's try the other one with a strong variation okay and the other tool that i really like is here okay on this line which in a moment i'm going to show you after this image is ready all right the image is ready and if you look at what we have here they are more or less in the same style, but with more variations, okay? The differences are more. Not, uh, it's not only in the small details, but for example, the way it looks, okay? More other things have changed in this part, okay? So let's say, let's come here on this version, which we made it with the raw style. I'm going to upscale number two, okay? So let's upscale it. Let's say... You create an image, you really like it, but the problem is that you don't have the full um, object uh, that you want, okay? Maybe you want more of it. For example, here, maybe I want to have the head of the robot as well. What should I do then? So here they added three other options about zooming out. So the first one is zoom out two times, okay? So if I click on it, it will go back two times. This one will go back a little, okay, like uh, one and a half. And here we can click on custom zoom. And here, as you can see, there is an option dash dash zoom. It is on two. Now, the number that here we can select is from one up to two. So, for example, if I want to go back very little, I can come here and write down, for example, one point, let's say two, okay. This will zoom back, but not much, okay? You see, it is building the image, it is creating the image, and now we have the head, we have more space around it, okay? Compared to what we had here, it is zooming back. So let's wait for these variations to get ready. Now here, pay attention, this is the original image, uh, it's gone, okay? It was, there was a frame, right? That was the original image, and we came back just a little, right? This, okay, it's ready. This is the version with zoom back on two times, okay? You see, we have uh, the top of the head. We have, so let me open it in the browser, okay? Look at here. We have a bigger space. The one that we had before, it was until here, okay? Before the head ends. But here, as you can see, uh, it went back further. You see here? So let's come here and all right, this is almost ready. Now this is the one with custom zoom of 1.2 as you can see here. And let me open it. And if we compare it with this one, you see it's ex it's exactly the same thing, right? The same object, but the part that it created 
has some variations. For example, here, this main part that we had it before is exactly the same on all four versions, right? But the rest of it will be different. Let's try it on another um, object or item that looks much better. For example, let me come to what I was practicing today. Right, let's come down. <laughs> okay, I was creating some funny avatars of myself. I will explain it on the upcoming chapters. We have a great tool to create um, this kind of avatars as a video. It's really amazing. So let's select one of them. For example, this one. I think I have a skill that one. Right, here it is. Okay, so let me, for example, come here and uh, try zoom out two times. Okay, and when the result is ready, let's scroll down. Let's wait for the result to get ready. All right, uh, it's almost ready. Let me open the image so we can compare it. Where is it? Right, I think it was somewhere around here. Here it is. So let's open it in the browser. And let's just scroll down to the new image that was created a moment ago. Now, look at what we have here. So as you can see, we had two shelves here. We had part of some creature like a dog here, some books here, okay? And we see part of the table and the above, the space above my head wasn't much. Now let's look at these variations. So the first image, the original image that we had is here, okay? In all variations that we have, it's exactly the same. It's only, the differences is only for the rest of the area that it just generated, okay? So we can look at and see that, all right, I like this one or like that one more, okay? So for the new environment. So this is the main use of zoom out and it's really, really amazing, okay? It is really helpful and today it helped me a lot as well. Now we have another option here, make a square, okay? So if we click on it, okay, it will regenerate the same image that we had, but it will jump on the square aspect ratio, okay? So let's wait for this image to get ready. All right, you see here is what we had in the previous image. You see the frame, now the frame is gone and now it is trying to generate the rest of the image but making it as a square, okay? So let's wait for it to get complete. All right, the image is ready and this way you can with a simple click, make the image that you liked before, you can make it a square, okay? So these were the new updates that we had on Midjourney 5.2. And uh, of course, the quality of the images in different uh, variations was increased, okay? In different styles, different types was increased. And you can practice it, it's really helpful. And for if we have more updates on Midjourney, I will record new lectures and edit the course. So that was all for this lesson. See you on the next. Midjourney is growing day by day and in the newest update it had, they introduced a new feature which is called Vary Region, which more or less I can say, it can compete in some ways with Adobe Firefly. So let's learn it. Here we are in my private Midjourney channel and I'm just gonna create an image, okay? So let's do that. Let's say, let's create, imagine, let's create an image of a burger, right? I'm just gonna write down burger, for example, on a plate, right? That's it. And let's run this command. Okay, the image is already, but it is a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna remove it. If you add cross reaction to any images created by Midjourney, it will be removed. So I'm gonna try it again, and this time I'm gonna use minimal keyboard. So let's say, for example, burger on a plate, solid yellow background, 
and minimal okay let's add this uh, aspect ratio to make it more interesting so i'm gonna write down dash dash ar 16.9 full hd aspect ratio so let's wait for the image to get ready the previous image that mid journey created was a little bit more a little bit complicated with a lot of stuff and playing with it was a little bit challenging i wanted to make it more simple so that's why i added the minimal keyboard you see it looks much nicer right let's open it in the browser right here is the image for example this one really looks nice this one as well and if you scroll to the right this is also cool from top view anyway i'm gonna select the first one okay so let's come here let's upscale the first one and now when you upscale in the newest version 5.2 these are the three options that was added very strong very subtle and very region now i talked about this before in my other videos this one will create similar images to this one but with a lot of differences okay but this one will try to create a similar image to this pair gear, but with small differences. And today we are going to talk about this option, very region. So let's say I don't like the objects on the right or the left side. So I'm going to click on very region. Okay. Let me just check something before. I'm not sure if I turn it on or off okay so my remix mood is on i'm going to turn it off in a moment i will explain what you can do with this so i'm going to click on very region and a new window will pop up it will bring the image that it was uh, that it created so let's say i don't like the glass on the left okay here at the bottom of the page we have two selection tool first one is rectangle tool and the second one is lasso tool Okay, so I'm going to select the first one and I'm just going to make a rectangle on the object that I don't like or I want mid journey to try and change it. For example, let's say I don't like the right, right part of the image as well. I'm going to select that part as well. And if you, uh, for example, you don't like the selections with this undo button, you can go back. Okay and try select again or if you want to add some additional part you can do it again okay so i'm just gonna select these two parts and when i'm done i'm gonna click on submit now mid journey will create four new variation and with the same image but it will change the part that i selected if you pay attention it is creating it is working on these on the left and right side of the image okay so it will get ready in a moment now with itself it tries to create different ideas okay so for example let's open it in the browser for example here in, here in the first image the left side is empty the right side we have some fries on the table here we have for example some um, fabric on the table and there is nothing else around it it is empty here here we have some kind of ketchup okay and yeah more or less it's like this okay this one is good right number four but what if i want to add some specific object here okay let's come back here and if i upscale number four let's say this one is the one that i like the most how can i add a specific object this is the part that i get that i told you at the beginning of this video that it can compete with Adobe Firefly. So if I just come here and click on very region, I cannot add any prompt, right? How can I do that? So if we come here and turn on remix mode, if we scroll down and click on very region, now we have the ability to add a prompt. Now here it will bring the prompt that we already used to create this image. For example, let's say I want to add a glass of Coke, Coca Cola here. All right. If I just submit the same thing, it tries 
to apply the same prompt here only for this part. So I'm just going to remove all of it and write down glass of Coca Cola. Okay. And submit this. So let's wait for it to get ready. Even though that I remove the aspect ratio, it appears here again because it tries to keep the image that we had earlier and just make some changes on the part that I select. Okay. As you can see, this is the part that I mentioned. It can compete with Adobe Firefly. Now it has its own um, advantage and dis disadvantages. Okay. For example, this one is looking really good. This one also. Okay. Even though that I mentioned some to add something here on variation number four, four it doesn't exist. Okay. So let's say I'm going to select number one. And let's upscale it. Let's say, for example, let's say I want to add fries here. So let's create, select very region. And this time I'm going to use lasso tool. Okay. So for lasso tool, we can just click, hold the mouse, mouse button and select the area that you want. I'm going to select a little bit more. Now pay attention that the area that you select informing the shape that you ask from mid journey plays a major role. Okay. So here I'm going to write down, for example, French fries. Okay. With a mini bowl of ketchup. Okay, let's submit this. Now, sometimes when you do this process, you may not get the result that you want. I will show you in a moment. So you can play with the selection and play with the keywords in order to get what you really want. Now, as you can see, for example, it in two of the versions, it just put the fries there. But in one of them, more or less, it looks like this, the things that I asked. Okay. We have fries with a small bowl of ketchup, but if you don't like it, you can keep playing with it. Right. So let me show you the example that I work, was working on it earlier. So here I uploaded three of my images. I want to, I wanted to make something out of it. Okay. So I uploaded this image and with this prompt here, okay. Zebra, which doctor, 3D monster, scary, minimal, purple gaming light, etc., etc. As you can read here, it created these four variants. Okay, and I like this one the most. And then I started to work with it on using the very region tool. So I created some other examples, but that doesn't matter. Let's just scroll down. So I um, scaled up the variant number four, this one, I scaled up that one. And then I work with the very region and that the specific part with remix mode on. Okay. So I tried to change something on my shoulders. Okay. You see the shoulders are different, but it didn't work well. Okay. My selection or my keyword, uh, they weren't good. So I keep kept working on it. Now you see, I, in this example, I increased the selection part. Okay. I came more to the bottom on my hand and you can see it added something. Then I didn't like it. I changed what I was holding. I didn't like it. I played with the prompts here. So if you want to check out the prompts exactly, you can pause the video on each of them and look at them. Okay. I still didn't like them. So I worked more on it. And then in this version, I liked number one the most. So I upscaled it. Now from here, I worked on something on my back. I wanted to put some stuff, for example, there. I didn't like them. I played with the keywords. And finally, I think I selected something here. This one I selected. Again, I upscaled it. And then I wanted to change my hat. 
it doesn't look so good the way that I want so I let it go and here I was working on my hat again so I made the selection smaller you see the hat design it's a little very little different but it wasn't what I wanted so I kept working on it okay so here again I try to work on my shoulders to add something some cool armor stuff and until here that I played with keywords and the selections that I had until and this one uh, was created and I liked it the most okay so I upscaled I think number four we can view it in the browser okay so you see you can compare it from the first image that we had um, let me come here let's just scroll up the first image that mid journey created for me okay it was this one so let's open this one as well so this was the first version this was the version that i used to change with very region to okay see the difference okay and i kept working on it but where were we I kept working on it but I didn't like what I was receiving okay here we were again I tried the hat thing I didn't like it okay so I kept working on it but uh, as I said I didn't like what I got and this one was what I really enjoyed so anyway you can use very region to make specific changes on different parts of your image okay so that was all about this part if you have any question write it down for me if you have any request for me to create videos for you you can write it down i will read all of your comments take care and see you soon